Hey everybody, how are we doing today? Um, welcome to the Wednesday live stream. For those of you who are not familiar with this channel, the live stream is something I do every Wednesday where I just kind of like find some cool science stories and I give you a little bit of a, a little taste of them, a little appetizer for the stories. I put the links down below. So of course, I'm just going to kind of skim through all these and if you want to uh, go check them out. You can go check them out and find out more in those articles. Now, first things first uh, that I need to say right off the bat, do not adjust your screen. I did shave my beard, so nobody freak out too much. <laughs> uh, I just, I get tired of it sometimes and I just, uh, just decided to take it off. But so it's, it's gone right now. Uh, and don't be surprised when tomorrow's video, it is back because I recorded that before I shaved. So um, for some reason, whenever I shave, everybody kind of loses their mind. It's kind of whatever. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, I got uh, I got some new microphone set up. Last time there was a little bit of noise. There was some popping and stuff. I got a new filter on here. Hopefully that'll be better. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, I'm seeing some people in the comments so or in the live stream, live chat. Um, so what I'm going to be doing as I go through this uh, is I'm just going to go ahead and you know, tell these stories and stuff. I won't be able to respond to the live chat while I'm doing that. But if you have questions and you want them answered, uh, if you do so in a super chat while I am doing this, I will go back and answer them at the end because I have a way of going and finding all the super chats and that way it won't get lost amongst everything else. Um, super chats just throwing a buck in a tip jar basically is all it is and it's a little thing that youtube does and it kind of smooths the whole thing out so anyway uh thank you guys for joining let's just jump right into this as you could probably tell from the thumbnail um a little bit of this is already spoiled <laughs> but the main story the main story this evening is spacex's plans for kennedy space center so this is from florida today which is like a usa today subsidiary um, but yeah, they, they, they just basically released these design concepts for this observation tower. And I think I was seeing some people talking in the live chat before I got started that they were worried that it might be too easy to fall down. Um, I have my concerns about that as well, especially being Florida and hurricanes and everything. But I'm sure there's, you know, if, if we can keep big, huge wind turbines up and, uh, and Texas weather, I'm sure they can make that work. But, um, this is actually this is just a little part of it. That's the observation tower, and if I'm reading this correctly, it's actually set up so that they can see a couple of different, they can have line of sight with a couple of different launch um, launch pads, the ones that they're likely to use the most. So that's kind of the purpose of that. But there, that's just a small part of it. There's also they are going to be um, so yeah, the whole launch and control center is a whole new thing. Um, yeah, so they're building a whole new processing center here. Um, they are planning to be doing something like 60 plus flights a year uh, coming up soon. So they, they wanted to set up a space right there on site where they you know can land the rockets, refurbish them, get them right back up as soon as possible. So they're building this new hangar that's going to be huge, which is interesting because that's what uh, Blue Origin's doing right now too. They're building their center right there near Kennedy Space Center so that they can get the new Glenn up and running and have it <clears throat> right there nearby so lots of new stuff happening on the space coast guys um so they also have something called a rocket garden that they're working on now if you've been to the nasa center in houston now i, I went there when i was a kid so this may have changed since then but they they have the i don't know if they call it a rocket garden but they have like the saturn 5 kind of laid out horizontally on the ground which is kind of amazing you can stand right next to it see just how huge it is uh you know but they kind of have all these rockets laying around so you can kind of walk through and see them well spacex is planning something similar for their design or for their uh, center their campus and it's going to have um let's see what does it say it says rivaling the open air exhibit of famous spacecraft on the nearby ksc visitor complex it's kennedy space center uh they plan to display historic space vehicles in their own rocket garden potentially featuring Falcon boosters or dragon capsules staged vertically or horizontally. So uh, they're basically setting up a big visitor center is basically what that is. That's a place for tourists to go to, uh, which is kind of neat because really SpaceX has not been a place you could go visit. You know, it's not, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not too far away from the headquarters or the uh, test facility down in McGregor, Texas. I've been wanting to go down there for a while, but, you know, it's not like a place where they're going to give tours and stuff. That's where... Um, 
Anyway, point being, SpaceX has never had a place where you can go and like be a, a tourist, and it lo looks like that's what they're setting up here for that. And it just kind of goes into detail about all the different launch locations around and where it's all going to be laid out and stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. And of, of course, this image is the one that's getting all the attention, the one about the observation tower, just because it looks like the Jetsons, as I put in my thumbnail. Um, my only beef with it, if it is a beef, is it just doesn't feel like SpaceX to me. I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like their aesthetic to me. But who am I to judge that? I don't know. Now, these are just plans, and it might not turn out to be like this. They might go with something completely different. But this was uh, released this week, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So there you go. All right. Uh, next up, this one's kind of cool. And I'm going to totally murder this one because it gets pretty deep into some, some theoretical physics stuff. But uh, if you remember last year, LIGO, the Laser Interferometer uh, Gravitational Observatory. Dude, I got it. I didn't think I'd be able to get it. I thought I was going to brain fart that. Anyway, they, det they detected gravitational waves for the first time. They have repeated that. They re uh, found some, again, just earlier this spring, I believe. Um... But this is a new paper, this is an article that I'm sharing from uh, phys.org about a new paper that was released that was from a team of European physicists that are um, speculating that maybe we aren't finding black holes through these uh, gravitational observ or observations. Uh, they may actually be wormholes. So I think there's a certain, let's call it sect, <laughs> of astrophysics that doesn't think that black holes are what we think it is. It's not like a gravitational singularity that all matter and light and everything falls into. Because it does break... I mean, the reason why black holes are so um, so fascinating and the reason why people like Stephen Hawking you know, can you know, spend their entire lives studying the whole thing is because all of the physics that we know just break down at the event horizon. Especially quantum physics, it says that information can't be destroyed, uh, which leads to things like the holographic principle that's, you know, holographically embedded onto the surface of the event horizon. I mean, you get into all kinds of crazy stuff to explain away this thing that shouldn't be happening, basically. Well, this crazy thing that, they're <laughs> that they've come up with is that it's not, a black hole is not a gravitational singularity at all. It's actually a wormhole to another universe. Now that's nothing new. People have proposed that before, but they're basically saying they're basically using the observations that LIGO uh, was able to come up with to explain this as a wormhole instead of as a black hole. Uh, now, like I said, this goes into some super deep stuff. I could literally just read this to you, uh, and that's probably about the best I could do. <laughs> but I mean, like uh, uh, right here. So the it's from KU Leuven University, I believe, in Belgium. And uh, so this professor, Thomas Hertog, uh, presented this model, and he says, uh, actually, this is somebody else named Bueno. It says, wormholes do not have an event horizon, but act as a space-time shortcut that can be traversed, a kind of very long throat that takes us to another universe. And the fact that they have rotation changes uh, will affect the gravitational waves they produce. So uh, th what they're basically looking for is a type of echo. There would, they, they theorized with the math and everything that there would be a type of echo in the uh, signature of the gravitational waves that they're picking up that would determine whether or not this was from um, a wormhole or a, a black hole or neutron stars and all that kind of stuff. So they're looking through what's already been uh, observed through LIGO and they're keeping an eye out obviously for future observations to see if they can determine this echo is true. But it's an interesting, I mean, it's, it's speculative as it says right there in the headline. It's very theoretical, but you know, when, when things like wormholes come up in, in these types of um, publications, you take note of it. It's pretty interesting stuff. Moving on. So uh, I've talked about quantum computers in the past. Well, now Intel is now, well, hello. When Intel is now capable of producing full silicon wafers of quantum computing chips. This is according to an article in TechSpot. I will say real quick, I'm not familiar with TechSpot. I don't know how accurate their uh, their stuff is, so you know you got to be careful on on the internet these days. So I will say that I don't I don't know much about this site, but um, what it's basically saying is that they are. Uh, it says last year Intel was able to take a few steps toward the commercialization of quantum computing. A 17 qubit superconducting chip was built, uh, and it was showed off at CES 2018. One this year with 49 qubits. So what they're basically doing is they've gotten to where they can maybe start to mass produce 
quantum chips. Um, now, the question that I have that was not answered in this article was whether or not this is the quantum annealing or the, uh, what is it, the, the gate model of quantum computing, which I covered in my quantum computing video a while back. Um, I don't know which one this is. I'm going to assume that it's, uh, if they're talking about the ones that were the 49 qubits, that would probably be gate model because like D-Wave, they've already gotten up to like 2,000 qubits in the annealing model. If you're confused about all that, um, I'll try to, if you're watching this later, I'll go back and try to put a card here to go watch the quantum computing video I did that explains the difference between the two. Uh, I won't go into it here. <laughs> but, um, but it says here that in an interview with their director of quantum hardware, Jim Clark, reveals that the current technology being used on small scale production could eventually scale up to beyond a thousand qubits. So when we're talking about a thousand qubits, that makes me think more it's more annealing and not the gate model. But anyway, um, there's more about this, obviously, in the article. I'm not going to sit here and uh, read the whole thing to you, although I could. It's not very long, but um, interesting stuff. We may be having, you know, another breakthrough in quantum computing. I, I think I probably should do a follow-up episode on the quantum computing thing, because I feel like every time I look up, there's another big headline about quantum computing. I think it's it's happening a lot faster than we think it is. Combine that with the neural networks and uh, AI and machine learning and stuff. We've got some interesting times ahead, guys. So I normally do three uh, three segments on these things, but I'm going to throw in a bonus today because I thought this was super cool and it's probably going to stir up a whole lot of conversation amongst people. This is from The Atlantic. So there's a company called Carbon Engineering and they have figured out a way to pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and make gasoline out of it. Gasoline, jet fuel, and other types of fuels that can be used. Um, and it's basically... A combination of what do they say here? It's a combination of like a with the way a paper mill works and um, something else. What was it? Air scrubbers. Well, it says their research seems to almost smuggle technologies out of the realm of science fiction into the real. It suggests that people will soon be able to produce gasoline and jet fuel from little more than limestone, hydrogen, and air. It hints at several construction, or I'm sorry, it hints at the eventual construction of a vast industrial scale network of carbon scrubbers capable of removing greenhouse gases directly from the atmosphere. So what's interesting about this is this, is, this isn't something that they just thought up. This is something that's kind of been theoretical for a while now. But what, they're, what they've done is they've taken regular, regular, uh, they, they're taking technologies that already exist and combining them in interesting ways to pull the price down of something like this. So they were saying that uh, the price used to be more than $600 to do something like this. Now they've got it down to $94 for, uh, per ton of carbon dioxide removed from the atmosphere. So it says that those rates it would cost between a dollar and two fifty to remove the carbon dioxide released by burning a gallon of gasoline in a modern car. So what's exciting about that is that uh, you know the the big struggle that we're having right now is we're trying to convert our infrastructure from fossil fuels to electric or whatever it is that we're going toward here is. Um, you know, it's kind of like changing people's behavior. It's having to, you know, buy new cars and all that kind of stuff. Whereas with this, you could actually get carbon neutral gasoline and it would be carbon neutral because it's not something that got pulled out of the ground and then pumped up into the air. It's something that got pulled out of the air and then put back into the air. Um, so, I mean, they, they've got some, some pretty big ideas around this involving setting up these kinds of scrubbers all over the world, or at least in some of the more, um, let's say carbon positive countries. And, um, and by doing so you could, you know, with, with all the observations that we have in satellites and everything and keeping an eye on the, the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere and whatnot, uh, we could just, we could get it to the level we want it to be and just manage it. So this is very far thinking. This is maybe 50 or hundred years out. But, you know, as, as we're all worried about the global warming and the climate change and the carbon dioxide, this is something that could uh, maybe stabilize that a little bit. So, so already, as it mentions in here, you know, um, renewable energies, wind and solar, it's actually the prices continue to go down. We are expecting an inflection point where eventually uh, the fossil fuels are going to be more expensive than the renewable energies. That's, that's the trend we're on unless something changes. And doing something like this would um, sort of accelerate that that process. So um, 
I've always been, you know, listen, I I know that global warming splits a crowd. <laughs> I've got I've seen all the comments you guys whenever I've done climate change videos. I've always been I think less worried about climate change than maybe some other people are and I've gotten some flack from that. Uh, but it's because I think that there are technologies like this that are, are possible. I think that there are things like this that um, even right now with the current technology that we have, we could make this work if the incentive is there. And the reason why it's cool that they're going to actually make gasoline out of this is you can sell gasoline. So it can, it's, it's a process that would pay for itself. Um, anyway, I, I, I've always thought that there were technologies like this that were on the horizon. There were ideas like this out there that people were going to be uh, coming up with. And, um, and it looks like it looks like it's starting to, to happen. So that's exciting to me. Anyway, so um, those are the stories and the, the links to them are down in the description below. Please do go check those out. Um, but I think it's time for me to just kind of jump into the live chats here, see how everybody's doing and vamp a little bit. And uh, and when you guys have questions, hit me up. I see there's some in the super chat. I can jump into it here. Um, and thank you guys for that. Uh, so Z Sheps asked if I have a favorite YouTube cooking channel. Um, I don't watch a lot of them, but I'm good friends with the healthy junk food people. Um, and they have been, oh my God, I, I met them when they probably had about, about the number of subscribers I have now. Right now they're at like almost 2 million, 1.7 or 8 million crazy they're they're doing incredibly well uh but they're good friends of mine jp and julia i met them at um at uh vidcon a couple years ago uh, i would be seeing them in a couple of weeks but i'm not going to vidcon this year so uh I'm, I'm gonna be missing them but they're they're a lot of fun and they do really fun stuff on their channel so that that would be my favorite because i know them uh beardy mcbeard face asked if i follow the fully charged show i do i haven't seen any well i i haven't watched any of their stuff lately not for any particular reason, I think. But yes, I, uh, Richard Llewellyn, and, um, and yeah, I, I love his show. He does some good stuff. I would, I would love to collaborate with him or something sometime. Get in touch with him. Um, and Guajir left me a dollar in the tip jar, and I appreciate that. No question asked. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, let's see. Let me jump back over here. Hang on. Hang on. All right. Get a sip of water. Everybody doing good? Having a good Wednesday? I hope. My voice just went really high, didn't it? Uh, cured, Seward Karst asked if I own a Tesla. I do not yet. I'm in line for a Model 3. Um, I did some videos about that. And you will, you will know when that happens, trust me. Um, okay, so Charles... That's, that is all asked unrelated the expanse dot 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 WTF LOL. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I saw the expanse and I felt like I should, I should comment on it because I have been watching that lately. I'm only a few episodes in. I've been so busy, but uh, yeah. I love, I love the opening credits for it. The opening credits are cool. Uh, oh, William Astle. Thank you for that, sir. No question. Just figured it was time to actually support you. Some instead of just leeching. Oh, well, that's very nice. Leechers are fine. If you're watching and you're contributing and you're uh, uh, commenting and engaging and stuff like that, that all helps. But uh, I, I, will, I will accept that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, so Petit asked if I think Tesla is making the right choice going for chemical battery design instead of supercapacitors. Um, I'll, I'll put it this way. I think they're making the right choice now. Because that's the that's what works right now. That's the proven technology right now. Um, I think you know battery technology is changing. There's supercapacitors. There's solid state batteries. I keep hearing about, and um, I don't know. I mean, it's I think in the next maybe eight or ten years they might have to uh, switch to a different type of battery technology. It'll be interesting to see if they replace the battery packs in current Teslas with the the new newer better ones. I mean, this stuff is always going to be improving. That's not going to change. So. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, Poya Bo has had his Model 3 for a few months now, and it's an amazing car. He says, I will love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, Death Squad XX asks, what do I think about the recent layoffs at Tesla? Yeah, I heard about that too. Um, I think, 
it's it, look layoffs happen and it sucks but um and you know of course it depends on what it depends on what you already think of tesla the bears on tesla are like see this is just proof that they're running out of money and they're desperate uh the people who are positive on tesla are like yeah but it was re restructuring that's been going on for a while now and most of it were salaried employees and not you know the people working on the floor and stuff um th they have been restructuring for a while and he's been getting rid of contractors i say he it's not all elon um but um you know when when a company has to start showing profits for their investors you have to start doing stuff like that and i know they're in a cash crunch right now um once they get production up to the level that they're expecting in the next couple of months and they start really uh, putting things out i still think that there's probably going to be a big dump of model threes in july um i think they'll 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 come around i mean that's just kind of part of the growing pains of what businesses go through but that's just my opinion um Let's see. Did I hear about NASA finding organic matter on Mars? Yes, that's bro hammer. Bro, bro hammerer. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, no, yeah. So, I mean, like last week's Wednesday video, I, I put it out. They, they released that on Thursday. So I was like teasing this news that was going to be coming the next day, which I didn't know about because it hadn't happened yet. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I, I watched all that. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, um, I know that they were in Gale Crater, where Curiosity is, and that it had been filled with water for millions, hundreds of millions of years way back in the day. So that's plenty of time for some kind of organic matter to have, or some kind of organic life, <laughs> organic life, like there's non organic life, uh, to have gotten started there. And um, that doesn't surprise me. I think it's interesting. Um, and I'm sure they're gonna be finding even more as time goes on. So no, it, yeah, it was it was cool. I mean, I don't have anything really to add to it other than it, it's cool. Uh, Mirko Renner, thank you for that nice little tip there. Uh, go full screen. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Who said that? K Wakey. Sorry about that. Yeah, I was not I was not full screen. I forgot to switch it back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let's see. SLS or BFR first on Mars asks Damo French. Um, I just know that SpaceX's plans to go directly to Mars would get you there faster than NASA's plans to go to the moon and then to Mars. Um, so I, I, I like to think that, Na that SpaceX will probably get there first, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, go here asks uh when will the rest of your lightning round videos come out you got mine but you said there would be more um i'm not gonna say when but tomorrow um <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm doing a follow-up on tomorrow and that's that's not even all of them there's still more uh tell me you know what i'm gonna throw this to you guys somebody had the idea of maybe instead of doing a full lightning round video putting um putting lightning round questions at the end of every video. Like if I have a, my regular Monday video, like I did mine on fusion on Monday, um, at the end of the video, after I get done with the, or maybe I, maybe before I get to the Patreon stuff and, and the, the sponsor stuff, I, I answer some lightning round videos, maybe like kind of like what PBS digital studios does or PBS space time at the end of theirs that he answers comments from previous videos. It seems like I tried that once before, and I don't remember why I stopped. I don't know if I didn't think it worked or not, but that was something I was thinking about. I think it's not a bad idea. Um, my plan right now is still to just do another lightning round video. The only thing is the lightning round videos don't perform very well, to be honest. They, I don't get a whole lot of views on them, so I, it, which I don't really care about that so much. I just want to make sure I'm making stuff you guys want to see. That's all. Um, so anyway, that, that's an option. I'd like to hear what you guys think. Uh, who else? Somebody else dropped me a tip here. Who was that? Um, Vigard Angel. No, I'm murdering that. Uh, first time you caught me live. Thought you'd say hello from Norway. Any input on VW's ID series of BEVs or any other manufacturers with no uh, BEVs? BEVs. I'm not familiar with that. Um, I know VW is about to start going electric in a lot of their lineup. Um, I know Volvo, I think by 2022 or 2024, like their entire lineup is going to be electric or at least uh, plug-in, plug-in.
plug-in hybrid or something like that. Um, if you can explain to me what a BV, BEV is, I feel kind of dumb right now that I don't know what that is. I'm probably gonna probably gonna slap my forehead when I see it, but um, I, I don't have any specific information about Volkswagen's program, uh, which is weird because three of the four cars I've owned my entire life have been Volkswagens. I'm a bit of a I, I've always been a, a bit of a Volkswagen brand guy. Battery electric vehicle, I'm being told. B, uh, okay, battery electric vehicle. I, I, okay. I just think EV, I think electric video. Um, I've, been, I've been corrected. I've never heard BEV before, though. Honestly, I just always hear EV. EV. Maybe that's a, a European thing or something. Um, if I have a chance to go to Mars, will I take it? And will I have kids on Mars? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to have kids on Earth, so uh, Mars is pretty much out for that. Um, uh, you know, man, I, 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 uh, er, it, it would have to be something proven. It would, it, like, if, if, if they had gone several times and, I don't know, I, I, I don't see myself really being that, that adventurous, but um, I, let's just say I'm not making, I'm not buying any tickets to, to, Olympus Mons anytime soon. Uh, Aaron H. asking if I'd done or thought of doing a video about the supposed ancient nuclear detonations on Mars? I've not heard anything about that. So, no. I'm, no. Uh, <laughs> David Griffiths uh, says it's bovine emitting vestibule. I know some of those. Uh, oh, Darren, oh, Dara O'Callaghan, oh, my, that's the, that's the most Irish name I've ever seen. Uh, given the choice to live on Mars or the moon, where would you rather live out the rest of your life? Oh, God. Um, hmm. If I had the choice between those two? Hmm. I don't know. I, I'm just going to say Mars, I guess. Um. Not that it's any better than living on the moon. You're still going to have to live in a capsule your entire life. I would like to participate in, like, the moon or Mars Olympics. Because I think that would be dope to, like, do a high jump or a pole vault in one-sixth Earth gravity. That would be awesome. Um, oh, Joshua Ponce. Thank you for that, sir. Uh, love the channel and videos. What's my thoughts on the Tesla job layoffs? Well, I just talked about that. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I talked about that a minute ago, so you can go back and, and look. But yeah, I, I'm not I'm not too worried about it. It sucks whenever somebody has to lose their job, but I think um, they've they've got to get their finances in order for profitability for the net, uh, investors and everything. Um, Simone G is asking if I've heard of the Asgardia project. Not outside of any Marvel movies. Um, Cats or dogs, I'm being asked by Simba the Lion. I was always a cat person until I got the dogs that I have, and now I'm a bit of a dog person. Mostly I'm a dog person more than a cat person now because my cat pees on everything, and my dogs don't. So that helps. Speaking of dogs, Zoe, you want to get on camera? She's trying to get my attention. Um, so let's see. Melforf Silver, Joe, I love your channel, and my ch my class also loves your channel. You inspire me. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, what kind of class are you in? So now people are asking why I don't want kids. All right. So let me let me just uh, go on a little bit of a tangent here. Never ask somebody why they aren't having kids. Um, you know, I'm in my 40s, which is the age that by now most people have spawned, and I'm not. Uh, my wife and I are not having kids and oh, let's just say it's, it's a private thing. Um, for example, my sister who had plans to have kids and then had uh, a bout of cancer that she had to deal with, which took away her ability to ever have kids. She still gets people who come up and like, why don't you want to have kids? And that's an incredibly painful thing to say to somebody who has had to deal with that. 
so I'm I'm a little bit sensitive to it because of that. Like it's it's never it's not a personal priority to me, so it was never like a big deal. And I think as a guy, I don't get it as much as women do because it's like I've expected that a woman should want to have kids. Um, it's just not something that's in the cards for us, and I'm fine with that. It was it was never a big priority for me. So there you go. Um, now people are asking me to show the doggo. Um, Hang on. You are being called, Zoe. Here you go. There's this doggo. All right. Um, thoughts on poor Opportunity Rover? Oh yeah. So the Opportunity Rover is in the middle of a giant, like planet-wide dust storm. Um, I don't think it's going to get buried, but they think that it might lose some power because it's not going to have. Um, its solar panels are going to get covered up. I haven't heard any news on that, so I don't want to speculate too much, but I know that was something that was um, that was going on. Um, <laughs> thoughts and prayers for opportunity. Yes, thoughts and prayers, everyone. Uh, oh, I had a new... Uh, somebody left a little tip here. Let me go back. It's too busy playing with the dog. Uh, Morton Vanvik. Thank you, sir, very much. Also from Norway. Love your vids. Keep it up. How do I think hydrogen will do against batteries in cars in the future? Um, oh, don't eat the microphone. Um, so that's a debate. That's a good debate. Like whether hydrogen fuel cells are better than, than battery electric vehicles, CBEVs. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with infrastructure. And the thing about electric is you can just set up a basically a charge port. Like you can just set up an electric charge place, you know, and, and people can have destination charge. <laughs> She's falling down. Um, it's a lot easier to do the infrastructure, I think, for electric than for hydrogen, because for hydrogen, you need tanks and um, you need the things to plug them in, everything. Um, I'm not anti-hydrogen. I just I just feel like the momentum is going towards electric. Uh, oh, we got some more stuff coming in. Sorry. Too busy playing with the derg. Um... A uh, couple bucks from Russell Carter. Thank you for that, sir, very much. Um, Austin Bilar, have I considered joining the YouTubers Union? We could certainly use your help. Is this the thing that, no, that's, the, that's the guild, that's the creative guild. That's what Hank Green has done. Um, I'm not familiar with the YouTubers Union. I am familiar with the guild, and I, have, I haven't joined either one of them, not for any particular reason. I'm just kind of <laughs> keeping my head down and getting videos out. Um, Oh, and Slay uh, commented, he asked the kid question, didn't know it was a sensitive topic. Thanks for being honest. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing, again, it's not something I take personally. And um, being a guy, I don't think, like I said, I don't think I get it as much as, uh, say, my wife does or my sister or anything. It, but it is something that, that, it's just a very personal, it's a very personal decision that, that people make. And, you know, it's just something you probably should be careful about. Anyway. Um, have I ever done a video on the Event Horizon Telescope? Asks I own I own nuts Cascaval. Uh, I haven't, but I should, shouldn't I? Uh, I think I had that written down somewhere. It, it 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 may it may be on the way. It may be on the way. It's a good one. Good idea. Um, will I make a video on Northrop Grumman? Possibly, because I am kind of going through all the different space agencies and companies that are. Um, that are doing things and I know they've got um, they've got some some stuff coming up uh, tur, 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 tur. I've gotten a few people asking again about the organic molecules on Mars um, I've already spoken to that a little bit so you can go back and look um, let's see uh, I not I I got uh, I got no God oh, okay <laughs> I got no god. Uh, asked, heard MER has plutonium to stay warm. MER, sorry guys, what is that? Okay, I, I, I don't, I don't know what you're referring to. Sorry, but thank you for that. Um, let me just ask, uh, get a couple more here, and and I'm gonna kind of go on my way. I got, I got to fizz my dog. I'm not gonna fizz my dog. Uh, all right, so Nick Pierpoint, uh, do I know of the proposed use of superconductors in fusion reactors to increase the mag field and get energy finally oh, it moved, uh, making them commercially viable? Please see this. 
Well, I saw it. There you go. Um, Janot the proposed uses superconductors and fusion reactors to increase the magnetic field to get net energy. No, they are they're already doing that. Um, the Korean one was called the um, the star, the superconducting. Uh, tokamak advanced research reactor so I mean there several of them and actually all the stellarator designs I'm, I'm sure they have superconducting like helium cooled magnets around it so they're, they're already doing that they're already doing that um, Jacob Weston thank you for that tip sir um, oh things are moving around on me sorry guys uh, I know you're big on life extension what are your tips for a healthier life and what do you do to relax and find peace oh good lord um, <laughs> relax what is that peace so um I, my, I mean i get excited about the fact that people who are old right now like the 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 number of centenarians or whatever it is super centenarians uh the number of people living much longer and healthier lives is growing all the time and these were people who like if you i've been watching mad men a lot lately my wife uh is is watching it for the first time so i've been re-watching it with her and very accurate in terms of how much people smoked, how much they drank, um, and, and just ate meat and gelatin products and sugar. I remember watching or seeing commercials or ads for, it was either Coke or Pepsi from way, way back when, and it was like, it's got the essential sugars your child needs. And it's like, I mean, like they made sugar sound like it was healthy or something like that. Now we know, of course, it's, it's basically a drug. But um, considering... How long people are living now with all the damage that they did to themselves back in the day. When I look at, you know, myself and people in my generation, now granted there's there's a lot of other things out there now that people are, are worried about, but um, it makes me feel good uh, for my own, <laughs> knock on wood, for my own uh, future, whatever the word, I'm blanking on the word, but... Um, I just, I, I, I've, I've done the whole intermittent fasting thing. I'm still kind of doing that. I haven't been as strict as um, when I first got started, but I still, basically I eat like, I basically eat once a day, I eat one meal a day, and then I just kind of snack in my little window. And, and I've found that that works for me, you know? And, and I, I basically just try to exercise a little bit every day, um, even if it's just for 10 or 15 minutes or something like that. Um, I need to be better about it, frankly, but um, that's basically what it comes down to for me. I, I eat lean meats. I don't eat a whole lot of red meat. Um, I'm not a vegetarian or anything, but as far as relaxing and resting, God, I wish I could say I, I'm better at that than I am. Um, my wife got me a new chair, which I would show you, but it's behind the camera, and I've been trying to use that to to read more and just kind of relax and sit over there and spend that time i've also fallen way off the wagon in terms of uh meditation i'm still really big on meditation but i've fallen off that wagon quite a bit i need to get back on it uh the suicide racer five dollars for some puppy trees she will appreciate that thank you very much uh let's go back through um uh, matthew putz asked about cryonics i have a video in mind for that i need yeah there's that could be on the way um Somebody just told me I was weird. Barat Eswal, thanks for being awesome and responding. Well, thank you for that tip very much. Um, wait, no, I, I was just flipping through here and somebody called me weird. I got to find out who did that, which is not something I take personally. I'm fairly proud of that. Uh, oh, boy here also asked in my fusion video, did you come across the Polywell Fusion Project? No, I didn't. I don't remember seeing that one. Um... Is it another um, private effort like the um, General Fusion one? I don't know. I didn't see that one somehow. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I am a weird guy. I stay at home all day and talk about Elon Musk. Weird. I'll talk about other things, too. And you have no idea how weird I am. So, I take it as, I wear it as a badge of, uh, badge of honor. Uh, all right, one more question, and then let's uh, let's kind of wrap this puppy up. Show the chair. I can't call it show the chair. It's I would have to yeah forget about it. It's it's a nice chair. My wife got me a nice chair. Actually, um, yesterday was our tenth anniversary. My wife and I tenth anniversary. So that was uh. So now Albert Gerard is like screaming in all caps. That he's the one that called me weird. 
Okay. I don't know if it was supposed to be an insult. I don't take it as one. Whatever. Um, all right. One more. Let's see what we got here. Uh. <laughs> all right. I'll let's answer this one. Let's go. So the Xflow Cami said, do you think that there is a big chance that all life in the universe will start from life on Earth and from us colonizing other planets, either by evolution or by living, leaving germs behind? Um, well, that gets into some, you know, some uh, philosophical type stuff. It, you know, are we the first ones here? Um, there's a lot that believe we are. Um, or there's also the idea of panspermia, that, that we are the product of organic life that began somewhere else, either in our solar system or even beyond our solar system and traveled on rocks and asteroids and stuff. They did find an asteroid, uh, an extra solar, extra solar, whatever, uh, an asteroid from another solar system that did not come from our solar system they found recently. So that's definitely possible. But you're basically asking if, if I think that we are the first ones and we're the ones that are going to be able to actually like see the universe kind of thing. Um, I, I don't know if we're the first ones, but I certainly hope that we do spread um, beyond where we are because there's always the danger of that great filter that might be out in front of us. And I hope that whatever that great filter is, that we have the ability, the temperament, and the will and the know-how to break through it and um, continue on and, and do all the amazing things that I think our species is capable of. So on that note, let's, let's leave it on that note, shall we? Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for, for joining. There's like uh, 760 people watching right now. I'm, I'm, so, I'm always so thrilled when you people like show up for my live streams. And I, I, I did start this one a little bit late today. I uh, just had things going on. There's also a, a house that they're building like one street over. So there's a lot of construction noise these days. So I can't just jump on here whenever I want to, unfortunately. But anyway, um, I appreciate you guys joining. For those of you who left Super Chats, it means the world to me. I Thank you so much. And if you're watching this after the fact, um, most of my videos are not live streams. Um, I have Thursday videos around random topics, science type videos with some comedy thrown in on Mondays. Those are my bread and butter. These are just a little something to interact with you guys and share stuff that I think is cool that I find in my interneting that I do. So um, with that, I'm going to leave it. You guys, thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. Video coming out tomorrow, more lightning round videos, and um, I'll catch you then. Love you guys. Take care.